Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew, and on the bench today is a 3D rendering of a fantasy build that I was inspired to do from a single picture. Somebody sent me a shot of a flying train that I'm using as a thumbnail, and I don't know its origin or who did it or whether it's ever actually been made into a model. It's just a pic that came my way and got me thinking. So I printed one up for myself. This is about a 5 inch model here, and once I handled that I thought, hey, go big or go home, so about 50% bigger. I printed this in two halves, front and back. I had mashed up two 3D files so that I've got that square cab on the back of a diesel engine. Super glue on resin is an immediate and permanent bond, so it's a great way to join these two together. I just have to hold them for a couple of seconds in place. Voila! That joint needs to be reinforced and camouflaged, and I do that by going around the casting with a couple of pieces of one millimeter styrene post and more super glue. I'm doing this in a top half and a bottom half. The top half needs to sit on top of a base with a railing around the train. So I've made a paper template. This is two millimeter styrene sheet. It's very easy to work with. I just give it a couple of scores with an X-Acto knife and then it easily snaps in two pieces. I recommend you get yourself a good little supply of styrene for jobs such as this. Now I cut it to length. And do a little corner maintenance as well. That's a 120 grit sandpaper. The small holes are where I'm going to drill in with a one millimeter drill bit. If you refer back to the thumbnail picture every now and then, you'll get the vision of what I'm doing here. This is a little styrene cutter, also good to have in your hobby bench. The template ensures properly spaced and even measurements. I just go around and place each one of these in and press them down flat on the work mat every now and then to make sure they're exactly the same height. And the tricky bit was putting the top railing on with the same one millimeter rod. If you just hold it around a paintbrush or a pencil for about 20 seconds, you'll get a nice little bend in there. And everything goes to primer. Now this is a fantasy build and it's a little bit of a diversion away from my regular die-cast cars, but not to fear. Plenty of those coming up in the next few weeks, including a couple of Four Horsemen builds. And my wife Petra is going to make her third annual appearance for the Paint It Pink Invitational. I'm getting very close to 5,000 YouTube subscribers, and I'm going to do a big giveaway. And here's a company car for a friend of the channel, Terrain by Aaron. Hope you'll leave a thumbs up for this video if you're enjoying it and get all subbed up to my channel. It's absolutely free and it's the best way to help me out. With the base and the railing finished, I can now do a custom paint job. I mixed up red, orange, a little bit of light brown to get this effect on the train body with a gray stripe around it. But it's much too clean and requires that I slosh on some black wash. Now don't lose it here because part of the process is to then immediately blot off the excess and you end up with just a nice dirty motto, which is exactly what I'm going for here. 
I like to use a piece of raggedy sponge dipped in white and I go around and it gives just a nice distress weathering. That to be repeated in the exact same way but with black. It's almost imperceptible but taken as a whole it greatly adds to the weathered effect of the sky train that now looks like it's got lots of miles on it. Shaping up nicely and looking good. Today's community shout out goes all the way to Australia and Big Keg, who's already got a strong following, but I want to put you onto his trail as well, so please follow the link in the description, make a visit, and leave a thumbs up. I'd appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Part two of the Skytrain project begins with an identical piece of two millimeter styrene for the platform, but in this case, everything's going to be built on the underside of it, and at the end I'll fuse these two together. But it was much easier to work in an upper and a lower half, as you can appreciate. I have always collected junk and bits and bobs from here and there. I really don't have a set plan in mind, but I lay out all of these pieces as possibilities for the Skytrain. Some of these pieces will make the cut and others won't. Remember, it's got to be a flying train. It has to have enough power to get all that iron up in the air and keep it up there. And everything is grist for the mill. Actually, I have a huge 100 liter plastic tub filled with individual Ziploc bags where I organize plastic pieces or round pieces or these are parts from computers and old printers that I've taken apart. There's a mechanism from a CD drive. Spacebar off an old keyboard. Never throw away a bottle cap or a coffee creamer. You never know what kind of landing gear or thrusters they could be for. More computer parts. I don't even know what that is. But it looks cool. Motherboards. Diodes. I'll use those wires. What is this space age looking thing? I don't know. Plastic caps from super glue tubes. Look at this big mama jama. That's actually iron. Way too big. Way too heavy for the sky train. All right, file that for future reference. Do you know what this is? It's the water filter from inside my coffee maker, and it looks just like a Star Wars spaceship. Not perfect for the sky train, but definitely a future project. I don't even throw out my old Dremel wire brush attachments. You need springs? I got big ones, little ones, curly ones. Pull tabs off of a pop can. I mean, anything can be used. I do like this remote control casing because it's going to add some rigidity to this piece of styrene sheet that I started with, as well as a good plastic grid for gluing things onto. This is the front. Kind of looks like a railroad car cow scoop. Here's some of the keyboard pieces. A plastic drinking straw with the elbow in it. When that's all painted up, it's going to look like a, a nice piece of heavy industrial piping. All kinds of gears and vents and fans. Again, no scheme in mind. I am going off the thumbnail pick for reference, but I got to use what I've got on hand. This is a great mechanism from inside an old DVD drawer on a computer. I don't know what that is, a chip clip? But it's perfect to fit inside. I need a really strong piece right here. This is where the support stand is going to go. It's an old bubble gum container. 
Here are the pull tubs going on. Some kind of heat shield again out of a computer. More super glue. And if you need an extra stronghold, then it's super glue and baking soda. And that instantly dries and gives you a cement bond. Look at this. All the random parts look awful when they're just glued on in this fashion. But we are not nearly done yet. And the next very exciting step is to put all of this into the spray booth and give it a primer. The black and the yellow and the red and the orange pieces all become blended together now. I'm just using a spray can off the shelf at my local hardware store for such a big project as this. Check it out. It's starting to look like it was all meant to be put together just like this. Black base coat is next. Again trying to match the thumbnail pick. That round piece on the top, which is actually the very bottom, is the booster. I scratch built this crane out of some styrene rods and used 3D resin supports. Put a couple of hooks on there and that's going to sit on top of the cab of the train. Just like that. Couple of final touches now as we round third base headed for home are some final small details and weathering. I'm using the Aho Model Air Silver on the tip of a toothpick and if you just scratch it along some of the sharp edges especially you'll get a very realistic scrape effect. I've got these little LED lights and I clip off the connectors. They're great for ambulances or fire trucks or in this case the proper red and green lights as per the rules of the sky. Some caution decals on the front and around the booster. Some wires added, dangling, a bit random. It's easier for me to turn it over in my hands for you now, before I put the two pieces together. This is what I set out to do. And this is what I was able to produce. I think it's pretty close. Starting with a 3D resin print of two different trains, using the stuff that I had on hand, got lots of gears and gizmos and add-ons that all look like a random assembly at the beginning but blended together well to give me the effect that I wanted for the Skytrain. You can see it from all angles now. I put it on a simple 10 millimeter post and a heavy base just so that it can be rotated and viewed from above and a little bit from below. I hope you enjoyed watching this fantasy build. I want to thank you for visiting my channel today. Sure would appreciate reading your respectful comments below, and I invite you to come on back soon, and often. It's coffee time. <laughs>